morning, fellas. Good morning, man. I, I, I got your coffee. Oh, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Was that coffee compliments of Thor Eric? It was. Put it on our tab. Thanks, man. Thank you, uh, Thor Eric. Or is it Eric Thor? Oh, Eric Here's Thor. Thor Eric. Thor Eric. We had a fun ride out of here yesterday. It was the craziest drive down this little gravel road. There was a car upside down. There was a guy from Boston. Yeah. What, what did he say to you? Well, I had some boards sticking out of the back of my truck and he wanted to see if I was going to throw away the boards. Because yeah. he Literally. wanted them. He's going to make a shelf out of the boards. Yeah. So there was that guy. Then there was another lady that almost ran Jason off the road. But then she ran off the road into yeah. the ditch, and these guys had to, had to like drive, her car out of the ditch. And drive it and push it out of the ditch. Oh man, I missed that. I didn't know if I was ever going to get out of here yesterday. So I mean, you apologize for any Bostonians for that. I'm accident. sorry. What, I, what I don't else even did he know. say? You do a good Boston accent. I know I don't. It's terrible. I don't know. Well, that, that's all he said. I gave him the boards. You gave he was what? like, "Are you going to throw we, them away?" We had I was some like, "Scrap boards," and Jamie actually gave I was like, the Boston no. guy. I, the I wasn't going to throw them away, but he wanted them so bad, I just gave them to him. Huh? What'd you give them? A bunch of, uh, like, Four. one by 12 boards. No, <laughs> there it is. Boards. <laughs> but Boston guy talked to me, too. Right. He said, he said, yeah, it's a, it's a nice day outside. You boys should be walking. <laughs> That's what he told me. I was like, I, I was working until, like, two minutes ago. <laughs> it, it was, was like 5.30. Also, we've got some tongue and groove here. And you might be wondering, what's tongue and groove doing out here? Because we're not ready for the inside finish. Mm. Well, mm. Someone forgot to check or double check the spec sheet before installing the porch ceilings. Someone, <laughs> someone. Yeah, that right. That was Ray. Right, exactly. I'll take the blame. Okay. Well, so, it's not the first time this has happened. Yeah. So every house, there's different finishes, and I just, in my head, I thought this one has the LP smart side panels on the ceiling. It did not. The homeowner saw pictures of the ceiling here and was like, huh, that doesn't look like tongue and groove. And it was not. So we've stained up some tongue groove. It's out here, so that's gonna go in as well. And that's just one of the things that can happen when you're a contractor. <laughs> Yay. Now, do you have any reason to believe that this is gonna be not damaged? The box is in better shape. Okay. Than the last two. Well, that's a good sign. Yep. Yeah. So um, this stuff, I mean, it, it is a pretty fragile thing. It's not like it's no, super it is. tough. And so it is. My concern is they keep packing it the exact same way. Yeah, so let's go and lay it down. Yeah, be careful. Don't break it. I know. Okay. I'm just even being super careful pulling it out. Okay, we got... All right, there's one. Oh, is it good? It's got a slight damage. Slight damage. So that uh, one's good. I think it's usable. I would call that usable. Uh, that one... That one's pretty much <laughs> broke. Boys. She, ah! she, she, done, she done broke. She done blowed out right there. <laughs> Anybody could okay. see that. All right, well, the panel we really need is this back one. Well, oh, okay. So let's be super All careful. All right, oh, so careful. I mean, oh, like oh, careful. oh. Ooh, could it's, it be? it's in one piece. All right, I think, I think we've got it. Well, <laughs> we celebrated too early, <laughs> didn't we? Well, oh, well. Mm. So... That's a different color than the side panels, and we don't have any, out of all this stuff, three that are the same color now. Seriously. Uh, let's do something else. Let's just put it some siding up. This is the cut they had to do around the edge of the roof over there. So, you know, not every cut is as simple as you'd like it to be. Yeah. No. See the confidence I have? He goes, you made that cut. I said, yeah. He goes, what, you get new glasses? <laughs> that looks good from here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be cutting an angle on the bottom of these siding panels. And I really want a very precise match to the angle of the roof so that our gap off the flashing stays like beautiful and consistent. So without ever knowing the angle, I'm going to show you an accurate way to get it. I'm just going to put a piece of plywood with a factory edge down on my flashing and I'm going to simply hold my level perfectly, I think, draw a line on it. Now I can apply my angle to the sheet. What's important though is to always reference that factory edge that I put against the flashing against a perpendicular edge here so the bottom of the sheet is square and all I got to do is tick mark both ends of my angle jig, we'll call it, 
and now I can draw a straight line that is the angle. Now this line, it's important to say, is not in the position I want it to be, but because it's on the edge of the panel, I can't slide my jig down far enough. I'm just gonna draw that line and, and, then, and then I'll slide the line down. Because the scale of my jig is like the full width of the sheet of plywood, like four feet, I know it's accurate. What may not be accurate is to take your handy speed square and I'm not, I'm not gonna do it where that line is. Let's say you hold it on a 412 as best you can and then you draw your 412 because that's, well, that's, that's well, what we think that's it is. That's what we think it is. So you're already maybe not accurate because what you think it is might not be what it actually is. And so my jig takes that out of the equation. Then you might do something fancy like this and do your absolute best to make a line. And this might be okay if you're doing something where it's a non-critical place, say it's gonna get covered by a piece of trim or you know you wanna hold it short intentionally, but that's not what we're doing. We're doing something visible with a super tight tolerance. So actually I could even check right now, just cause I have two lines running. This would be interesting to see if they're parallel. So that's uh, about six and a quarter. And I mean, I don't know, it might be right here. That actually is pretty darn accurate. That's six and a quarter. <laughs> wow, I might've just proved myself wrong for you. <laughs> At any rate, it does confirm. I would agree with you that the, the second way you did it with this little speed square can get you into trouble by, you know, you get off a, one degree and then by way out there, you're off like yeah. a half an inch. Would simply the width of the line like the width of the mark at the four? Yeah. Am I the center of it? Am I the edge of it? Am I the other edge? Yeah. Just by moving it like say a sixteenth of an inch right here, right there yeah. could mean an inch. Yeah, yeah. It could be an inch different I'm on the other you. end. That's why. Also I'm not Jono, I'm not sure if he's with you on he, this. He, he's not convinced <laughs> yet. That's okay. Well, here's our final line right here that we wanted on this first sheet. The rest of them will be across the whole sheet. We just measured what that was from this line to our point here across the bottom and then match that measurement there, drew the line. It was like 15 inches. That's it. That's simpler than it sounded. <laughs> there are other ways, but I think my time is up. We'll talk about that later. We've got three eighths. Well. This is our first panel that did not fit on our first try. And uh, just showing you guys, there you go. That's too much of a gap there. Where else is it bad? If you had a big enough caulk gun, it would work. <laughs> so this is a little bit of fidgety, fitty so kind of business here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this and use it as a template. So I'm just gonna make notes all over it as to the changes. That was an expensive template. No, it happens. I'm just busting it. It happens. Sometimes yeah. with all your best intentions, it doesn't work. We were so close though. Next time. So close. That's a nice move, Ray. Yeah, man. Somebody talk to me. Black chalk down, <laughs> black chalk down. Jono pulled on his chalk line like what he man and snapped oh, the end. Yes. Like whatever. Oh, snap. Just don't rub your nose for a while. <laughs> yeah, let Eric talk. Uh, on most base plates, it's something similar, but you know this one has just a one-sided notch. The blade's usually going to be on the right side of that line. This one has a U-shaped notch where the blade is, and that might be dead center on the blade on that one. I'm not sure. Probably. Uh, it's good to know your saw and know know your yeah, saw. Which side of the base plate notch your blade is going to cut on, and that'll really help speed you up doing stuff like this. Know your saw. Ray, we're going to do a little segment here where we guess how many nails are in a pack of coil nail. For the siding gun mm. what's your guess i'm gonna say 200 150. all right i'm gonna <laughs> guess 225. five inches is there between 18 and five inches we're gonna do the math this is why people are so surprised that we get so much done it'll help us to get more done later in life when we know how many nails are on a coil of these yeah, things exactly we'll call it 85 17 times 18 306. Ooh! 
So yeah, 300, that's a lot of nails. And that's why we use this coil nailer for siding. So we're not jumping down to reload clips of nails all the time. I bet there's only like 30 in a regular clip. Let's take a short break to thank our sponsor for today's episode, AG1 by Athletic Greens. So thank you to Athletic Greens, we really appreciate it. And if you don't know what AG1 by Athletic Greens is already, it's a nutrition company that has created a movement around simplifying your health. And it's not just for athletes, it's for life leads like busy moms and dads and people like you and me. My wife and I have been using AG1 for quite a while now, and the main thing I get out of it is extra energy. On top of the energy I already get from drinking a bunch of coffee, this makes me feel even better, and that's the main reason I like to use it. AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one convenient daily serving, and this special blend of ingredients helps your body's nutritional needs and supports gut health immunity, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. AG1 is also incredibly convenient. It's just one scoop or one travel pack in eight ounces of water every day, and that's it. And here's the bottom line for most people. AG1 tastes good. You can drink it. I can drink it. It's the best tasting supplement of its kind that I've ever tried personally. So if you're interested in trying it, go to the link in our description now to get a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Again, Athletic Greens is going to give my community an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Make sure to check out the link in our description. Thank you again so much to AG1 by Athletic Greens. We appreciate your support. Let's get back to work. We're done with the siding, but there's one last thing I'm gonna do because it's driving me nuts. This house wrap that's come off five times, now it's all wrinkly, like shriveled up, terrible. So we're gonna have to redo that before we do the siding with LP anyway. I gotta get rid of it, man. Okay. It's gonna drive me nuts, flapping around. What, that bothers you? Yeah. <laughs> it really bothers me. John was about to flex out his hours. Flip, flip that thing shut. Flex my hours. Yeah, you better flex out that checkbook. <laughs> it's Monday morning at the Perkins house and it's spring break, which means Jamie and Jason are gone. And so I'm gonna pick up a little extra help today. We got my man Chase who is 13 now and he's on spring break. There you go, bud. But I'm here. You can stay here, friend. First, we gotta get you a workout here so you don't get sunburned. This is my collection here. There you go, round right top. GRK? You know what GRK is? No. Okay. And there you go. Ready now. Most of my friends are going to the beach, but I'm going to work for spring break. You know, I would say getting paid is better than getting a sunburn any day. It's about the memories, Dad. It's about <laughs> oh, really? the memories. Oh, we're gonna make some memories today. We're making a stop here at the shop because Jamie is at the beach with his family on spring break. And um, I just realized that he has most of the tools. Uh, we're gonna grab a table saw, compressor, siding nailer, and whatever else we can think of that we're gonna need real quick. <laughs> Jamie went on oh, vacation. Me, oh, 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 I thought Jamie went <laughs> no. on vacation and forgot his coffee. No, man, this is me. Look how big that mug is. It's as big as your head. That's eight cups of coffee right there. Is it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm expecting a lot out of you today. Mm. <laughs> well, I better stop drinking this then. Cardinal coffee. Want to welcome Arlo back to the job. Yeah, we're, we're here. Yeah, <laughs> good to have you back. Taking yeah. a little break from your project. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've been uh, wonder board or you know, uh, backer boarding shower. Oh, that's the like worst. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah break time. Finally, to work here, and we're getting going by installing some Z flashing. Then, we're going to do another band board then more Z flashing and then lap siding on up to really break up the height of this tall structure on the back. And a little pro tip here is just simply the way we're lapping the Z flashing. You can see here that viewing the overlap, doing it this way from that side, it's really visible. Whereas if we lap it this way 
and you look at it this way, it's not very visible. That's the side that you're gonna be pulling up with the car. We do the same thing with like drip edge and any other kind of lapping, flashing every time we can to just make it look cleaner from the position you're gonna see the house the most. Oh, there's storms. <laughs> He's gonna wanna raise after this. <laughs> As far as I'm gonna go. Ray and I have been up here for what seems like an hour. Would you agree? Maybe more. Already? And all we've gotten done so far is just putting this band board up. But that entailed a lot of different things here. We had to do Z flash over the top of our battens here. And these are just temped right now because there's no window. We didn't want to put in the permanent one so that we could put these little spacer blocks in. And then we Z flashed over the top of that because uh, we're transitioning to this lap siding. Uh, and then we flash taped up to the sheathing under our house wrap. Then we added this kicker strip, which kicks out the first row of siding at the correct angle. And just FYI, this is not as thick as a piece of siding uh, to get the correct angle. That's why we didn't use a piece of siding due to how much it goes behind this piece. And all of that, that's basically what you have to do to transition from one siding to another. And that's a lot of work. Uh, so if you're looking to save money on a house, just do the whole thing in lap siding. It would be less expensive. But hey, this is gonna look way better. Yeah, I know it looks better, but I mean, the only thing that's gonna see it is Sasquatch from that hill right there, <laughs> so. You're welcome, buddy. Yeah, if you're looking to impress him, <laughs> you've got it. <laughs> Uh, there's Chase. He's been our board runner guy. So he's actually just going up and down the stairwell and uh, bringing us our material. That's right. You're pretty fast. Yeah, I am. I appreciate that. He's on the track team. Okay. Transportation logistics. You got to make it sound fancier than it is. Yeah, exactly. Very much fancier than it actually is. <laughs> around the house to this little gable end now and I need to find this angle so we can make our angled cuts like this just right. So we're going to do a little modified version of what Jamie did earlier in the video uh, and there's a couple things different here. One is that I have this horizontal reference. I know that that is level so I've got a piece that I cut roughly the correct angle on. I'm going to hold it flush on the bottom with my sheathing. I can now simply take something like a small level to scribe the actual angle onto it. So I can now do that, not on my hand. And that should give me the real angle. Can cut that now and make a pattern out of it and right. trace it on the other pieces. So it's just a kind of a modified thing of what Jamie did to get the same kind of actual angle, even if you don't know what it really is. Okay. All right, now what you gotta do is push the piece all the way tight with one hand. To press, the, press it in, yeah. get it centered. Press it in, now pull the trigger. One. Oh, double fire. All right, now we're gonna learn how to unjam a nail gun first. Disconnect the air, flip it open, and pull these out. There we go. Remove the clog. Yeah, you're welcome for the tutorial. <laughs> Close it back up, reconnect the air. And we'll give it a test fire here. Good to go. Okay, let's do it again. So you gotta be quick to let off the trigger because this will just keep firing. And you wanna be about three quarters down from the top, right there. Oh, <laughs> try again. Where you I gotta let off, let the let the gun bounce off the wall and let off the trigger. There it is. Up higher, it's too low. Right there. Boom. Nice. So this gun also has a bump trigger mechanism. That means if you keep the trigger held and you just depress the safety, it'll fire every time. So 
if you're walking around with your finger on the trigger and it bumps into anything, including like your leg, it'll shoot you. So never walk around with your finger on the trigger. But if you keep your finger on the trigger, Is that in transitions and everything? Whoa. Uh, what I've got going on here is child labor. <laughs> Chase is filming for me, and he's pretty good at uh, working video stuff. So he's throwing stuff in an editor on the phone, editing it on, on the spot. That's and, right. And I think he just got hired. <laughs> Ray's hiring, too. Yeah, I'm, he's, uh, he's on my list of people. Like <laughs> You're going to be rich. <laughs> So we finally decided to board up these windows and uh, we don't know when they're really gonna come. And I'm not Tyvekin this thing, house wrapping it again till, <laughs> till the moment before the siding goes on. So we're gonna wait on Jason to get back. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Here's a real pro tip if you need to start a screw overhead. Sometimes it's hard to get the force you need when you're pushing up high. So I like to get the, the screw head on the drill. Then just use the drill like a hammer and that'll get it started for you. And that does make it easier, which matters. In this spot up here, I'm gonna start to screw with my hammer because it's it's a little higher than I can even do that move. So I'm just gonna do that. And then I can really stretch up to it. That's a good trick for short guys like yeah. uh, uh, Ray and Jono. Jason. <laughs> Jason. I, I like this. This is kind of like ultra modern siding. It's a new kind of thing. Yeah, know? it's pretty cool. Thanks for building with us. Like and subscribe. Wait, doesn't your dad do that? <laughs> <laughs>